First is handmade illustrations. With so much AI generated content online, traditionally sketched and hand drawn animation will likely become more unique and therefore valuable in the future website landscape. There's no way I can draw this well, but hopefully one day I can learn. And here's a website that's already adding handmade sketches. And this website itself is called Procreate a Dreams. It's a website about creating animations using your iPad, but it shows you how these visuals can work to really showcase a website in a more human-like fashion. A website that has hand-drawn animations as well has a lot more personality and feel. And for me, I find that kind of stuff a lot more interesting. Here's one website. It's a cafe and they've got this one animated sequence here as one of their sections, which is really cool. I think this goes a long way to making this coffee look way more appealing than it otherwise would if it was just a general website. The second web design trend is 3D web design. I'm not a chicken, nor am I afraid of being a little bit different. However, creating 3D elements always scared me. Years ago though, you would need a special software and skills to be able to create these sorts of 3D animations. But Spline Design is a website that has made this accessible to pretty much anyone. You can use their web software to design any type of element. Then you can export it as an iframe or a script and plug it into any type of website, whether it's a no-code website like this one here on Wix Studio, paste in the code and have it available. And if even I can do it, I'm pretty sure you could too. If you're after a challenge and have a lot of time on your hands, you can make yourself a portfolio that's completely in 3D, like this one here. Web designs with these 3D effects definitely make it more interesting to navigate the page. Not only is it more engaging for the user experience, but the web designs actually look like they've been put together by experts and have this very polished and professional feel. And that's what I strive to always do with my own websites, even if I fail. If you want to learn how to do this yourself, definitely check out the video I made last month where I go into depth on using spline design. Once you've figured it out, you'll be able to create some pretty interesting things. Third is the use of AI generated artwork from places like Dali as well as Midjourney. If you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that you can use Midjourney to create some basic design templates for what a website could look like if it was imagined by an AI. The difficulty is that a lot of these designs aren't always realistic. They end up feeling very futuristic with neomorphism, 3D effects, and things that I can't really replicate using traditional programming code. Not only could I not put these in front of a client, I probably couldn't redesign them myself using traditional coding or design means. Even ChatGPT, which has enabled DALI to be run in an interface here to generate images, doesn't always produce the kind of results I would expect for a design. While it looks pretty and vibrant, this is not something I could actually recreate. And and while ChatGPT does also let you remix images, again, it's still not usable. But there's a reason that I think DALI 3, as well as Midjourney and AI Art will be more usable for web designs. Over the last year, there's been an abundance of tutorials and guides on exactly how to customize and tailor prompts specifically to get the outputs you're looking for. This makes the generation of AI art for web design specifically more reliable. This type of customization gives a lot of strength to really create a unique looking designs that wouldn't otherwise be able to be created on a whim. Plus, at the end of the day, a lot of these images are more for inspiration or even using as a large hero sections so that you can have a landing page that looks vibrant and interesting. The fourth web design trend is Bento UI or Bento Grids, whatever you like to call them. Bento UI are basically small grids, a mosaic of information that lets you showcase information on a website or product sheet. You'll see companies large and small like Apple Apple use it for product sheets and on their websites. Because we live in an age where people understand and consume content a lot faster, these bento grids work perfectly to allow users to view lots of information in one go. And since CSS now has properties to specifically create grids, having and adding them to a website is easier than ever. And if you want to learn, I did a video previously on how to do this. Time for the last web design trend. Number five is gradients and glows. If you've been paying attention, you'll notice that almost all the websites I've shown so far has have some sort of gradient or glow being applied. It's the 21st century and people aren't afraid of using color anymore, unless you're Apple. Additionally, a lot of computer screens and phones now have a beautiful displays. They're able to replicate most colors and make them look a lot more vibrant than otherwise was possible in the past. These days, I see that backgrounds for images no longer use solid colors, but instead a 
gradient of very complementary colors that work well together. And a lot of websites now glow. They have these glows that happen in the background on the corner or edges or borders of different elements and even just lighting effects that look like they produce a different types of depth depending on where your mouse is moving. And this is where websites of 2024 are going to stand out with 3D effects, glows, interactions, animated sequences, and a lot more, making them definitely look a lot better than previous years. Are there any design trends that you guys like? Let me know in the comments below and I'll check them out.